Welcome back to an abandoned and slowly fermenting jug of cow's milk. I'm your host, Lactobacillus helveticus, and today we'll be discussing proto-languages. Again, we discussed mostly just Indo-European languages last time, and also Uralic was there, and then I did Altaic, because I'm nuts! But perhaps we should stick with the real languages, at least for a bit. So if you don't know how this is going to work, we're translating the famous Day 9 quote, Your brain is small and both your hands suck, except I'm ignoring both because it's stupid and hard to translate. Show me Proto-Semitic. Proto-Semitic is weird, starting with the fact that it does not have a word for your. Instead, an enclitic is attached on the word being possessed, the letter calf followed by a vowel, which, as you can see by the diacritics, is both short and long and varies based on the gender of you in question. Usually male is the default, which is why I'm choosing the feminine form. More importantly, I like the vowel e more than a. The word for brain is much with the inserted u for the nominative form and the vowel being short in this context, so muhuki. And now we can move on to to be. Like in Russian, the copula is implied. Great. Sarir is the only word I could find for small. It also means something like younger, but hey, we say little brother in English. For a masculine nominative noun, it's sarirum. Now that S is what's called an emphatic consonant. It's what produced the pharyngealized sa in modern Arabic, but the adjective sa is more in the runnings for the original proto-Semitic pronunciation. The word for and is wa. For your hands, we get to use the dual, which is either frightening or interesting. There are two words for hand. I'm choosing yad because I hate geminated consonants. The dual form for a feminine possessive is, of course, yada kumai. And finally, suck. The word for this is yanak. Yes, I know in this context you would translate suck as underperform. You think they know the proto-Semitic word for that? Get real. Anyways, the ending for a third person dual feminine depends on whether the aspect, which is imperfective. So that puts the third person dual feminine imperfect form of to suck as tiny. Uh, see, they have vowel grades too. It's basically pi. Put together, it's muhuki sairum wayadakumai tiny. Honestly, I hate to say it, I got really hyped for this one. It's awesome, it's familiar enough to make sense, but it's alien in so many ways. If I had to give it a rating, it would definitely be high up there. Really high up there. The Dravidian languages aren't exactly known, period, but they're a language family spoken in southern India, which includes Tamil and probably some other languages. There's not too much out of the ordinary. Sure, they have some confusion surrounding gender, but hey, who doesn't? The Dravidian languages are poorly studied, despite being spoken by about a quarter of a billion people, but some of what we know about Dravidian is from their interactions with Mesopotamia before the violent horse people showed up and kicked them out. That's probably too oversimplified to be correct, but I'm not a historian. Anyways, the word for you is nin with a short vowel and oblique case like genitive. The genitive ending is then either a ah or in. Let's just go with a. Ah. The Proto-Dravidian word for brain is mitr. Now, you may notice a couple of things about this. For one thing, the, the Z makes an R sound. Well, Proto-Dravidian has a R and a R sound, and R is used for R, so Z is used for R, and you have to put a dot under it for some reason. More importantly, there's just the idea of a vowel here. That's because this became every single vowel in modern languages, and we have no idea which one it's supposed to be, but that's fine. I'm a native English speaker, and I have a pretty good Mandarin accent, so pronouncing a syllabic retroflex R should be easy. There are two words used for it to be man and ah, which potentially has one or more Ks after it, and this is where I would put the verb ending, if I had one, but it seems it has not been reconstructed. Oh well, I have enough white boy swagger and unearned confidence to attempt it myself. So generally, the Tamil form for a present verb starts off with a ka suffix, with an N in the past and a V in the future. In Kannada, it's T for the present, D for the past, V for the future. Malayalam is confusing, and I think the Lemma form, which ends in a K, is the present, and T is for the past, and Telugu is not really helpful. I will go with K, and then for a third person singular, neutral non-masculine seems to be Ate or Ade, or maybe Atu or Adu. I'm going to pick Atu because it seems the most middle of the road, so so if all that's correct, we would settle on akatu for the verb. Now, I couldn't find a word for small, or little, or thin, or short, or light, so I settled on young, which is kor. Something about nominative being the default form. Also, they have word order, so we should put the adjective before the verb, and and is um, which I append to the verb. So, hand is kai, and the ending added to pluralize is ka, or maybe na, or possibly la. It also could be all of them at once. Now, because everything here except Telugu is South Dravidian, we have to lean towards them, and I guess we'll go with a combination, which is more common there. So, kaingal. All right, one more word. There's no word for suck. Just use breast and start attaching verb suffixes. 
K for present tense, plural, non-male, that's something like avai or ave or avi. This is the most obvious way for the forms to spread, so it's palkavai. And all together, it's nina mitor kor akatum nina kainkal palkavai. I'm gonna be honest, screw Proto Dravidian, all my homies hate Proto Dravidian, it's so hard to find resources on this, and so many people speak the Dravidian language, get your crap together, I'm so mad, I'm not even gonna rate this one, F tier, no, uh, so, the Sino-Tibetan languages include Mandarin, Chinese, and some other languages which you've definitely almost heard of, Burmese is probably the most well known, then Dzongka, which should speak volumes, but, given Chinese, it's the second most spoken language family, second to Indo-European, a testament to the widespread nature of European culture, and also to the fact that a sixth of the world lives in India. So, possession is indicated by the thing being possessed having a particle attached to it. This particle, the, indicates specifically inalienable possession, this is the difference between your house and your intestines, in that I can take away your house and it will no longer be yours. Anyway, that means someone's brain is trnuk and you is nang. Hopefully, I can get away with just jamming these together. The word for small is ngai. It's kind of unclear. However, to me, ngai is definitely not a possible word, so I'm gonna go ngai. Again, there's no copula. So, over to hands, hand is tlak, which already has the possessive prefix, that's probably fine. There's no word for to suck, so again I'm going to use the word for breast, which I feel less bad about, because in Mandarin it becomes ru, which means to suckle. We haven't reconstructed any verb agreement endings except first person, and I don't think they have plurals. So, that means it would be nang tarnuk snai nang tlak snow. That's probably wrong, I couldn't find a word for and, and I still don't know what the hyphens mean. Is it a morphine boundary? I find it hard to believe that the pronoun you has more than one morphine. I'm sure this would make more sense if you actually studied it, but I didn't, so it's worse than Dravidian. I'm giving it a negative 7 out of negative 3. Okay. That was enough real languages or natlings. Now we can move on to your regularly scheduled madness. But first, a moment of post nat clarity. Ha 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 ha. Anyway, protostratic is basically what you get if you combine every language that we just talked about in all of these videos, except Sino Tibetan. And by that, I think you know I mean it's just nonsense. Also, in addition to the Indo European, Uralic, Semitic, Dravidian, and the three Altaic languages, it also has the whole macro Altaic group, which includes Korean and Japanese, and also Kartvelian, which is basically just Georgian. Now, there is a single common through line, which is that the word for me tends to start with an M, and the word for you tends to start with a T, or thou, if you want me to be pedantic. That's probably the best one, so I guess we're just going to go with it. Now, on to the genitive case, the genitive ending for PIE is S with the root in E grade. In the reconstructed Altaic I went with, the genitive ending was ni. This already doesn't bode well. In Semitic, the genitive case involved the vowel E, Dravidian is either E nor A, Proto-Uralic is N, Korean has V, Japanese has No, and Proto-Kartvelian is Ish. In addition to the S, PIE also has Sio as a possible genitive. Overall, we just kind of have to side with the majority because we are under no illusion that these words are actually related, and we're not going to think about the leaps necessary to maintain said illusion. In other words, the declension is going to be in. The previous Altaic for brain was reconstructed to be buying lie. PIE has Moskos, Semitic is Much, Dravidian is Mitor, Uralic is Ainge, but there's also the top of the head, which is Pange. Overall, a lot of bilabials, the Altaic is kind of close to the Uralic, and Georgian is once again left out, so I'm gonna go with buying Sky. I have no set phonology in mind, I'm just gonna pick whatever sounds the most intermediate. To save me the trouble, I'm going to assume the copula is implied. The word for small was Kitig in Altaic, Kur in Dravidian, Sagir in Semitic, Shenka in Uralic, and Mei in Pie. I couldn't find a protocardvelian, but the oldest form of Georgian I could find was Chik. So Pie is the odd man out, and we can roughly determine some tiny similarities. We have a voiceless velar or soft velar, then a palatal thing, then a voiced velar. If I had to put something together, I would have Katiga, which is coincidentally what that guy from Car says. This is obviously unrelated to BIE, but it would have created Tedos, which would be received as the Proto-Germanic Hikas, and ultimately English hype. What am I doing? That sentence was meaningless. None of this exists. Hands are a lot worse. The consensus seems to be that there is a velar somewhere. PIE is tesor, Uralic is kate, Semitic has kap, which means palm, and although I reconstructed it as elaiga, it seems like people prefer to reconstruct it with a ng in front. So, I'm gonna say the closest I can get to something in the middle is keltwa. Yeah, I know that sucks, but so does an theory in general. 
The dual case in the languages it exists in is Kerr and Uralic, H1 in PIE, and Na in Semitic. I really don't think it's possible to justify the Na, so we'll call the N in innovation and say protonostratic had laryngeals. Kelpah. Now, the word suck is hard to place. The PIE soak is proposed, but the Uralic shue is also likely. The Semitic has yanak, and I reconstructed the Altaic as keke or heke. Given we see a debuckalization of S to H in Greek, it's not out of the question, and if we are working on the assumption that N just kind of shows up in Semitic, we could place the root as soak. The PIE dual ending is tes, but PIE also has the same affinity for S stems, which could be innovated. Semitic doesn't shed too much light, so I think I'll end up with the Uralic pattern where the ending for a present indicative verb is the same as a noun. That is to say, ending H1, giving soka. So can these nuts got him? And we have tin baishnai katiga tin kelpa so ka. I think you can all agree that sucks, and we should give up on historical linguistics. I'm giving it a box of chocolates and a nice bouquet out of ten.